Hello again and welcome to this Lonesome Drums lesson for the Rascal Flats version of Life is a Highway. The opening fill is killer and once again it's that Motown fill which is a six stroke roll, right, left, left, right, right, left and then we're going to move down the toms. I'll play it slowly so you can hear how it goes. For this intro part, there's a regular drum beat going on and there's a tom beat going on as well. And from what I can tell, I don't have enough arms to play all the parts. So I've figured out a little something that has the snare drum backbeat and still moves around the toms a little bit. But if you don't like this pattern, you could just stick to a regular beat and that will still sound great. Moving on, we're into the main groove. This is just the riff section, but we're going to use this drum beat for a whole lot of the song. And the main thing to watch out for is the ghost notes, because that's what just keeps this groove sizzling and kind of cooking along the whole way through the song. The main basis for that groove right throughout the song is catching the kick drums which are on one and and three and. Other than that you can just fill in the ghost notes kind of however you like but what I've written is as close as I could get to the actual recording. Moving on I'll play the next four bars and then I'll go back and play the whole eight bars of this riff section together. Here's those whole eight bars up to speed. I really like all the fills in this song because to me they're really useful. They're the kind of thing you can play and it's kind of understated. It's not a big flashy chop that says look at me, but it's something that sits really nicely in the music and just allows everything to keep grooving. Anyway, moving on, we're into the verse. It's the same kind of beat, we're just going to scale back a little bit and add a couple of extra buzzers on the snare. That takes us into the pre-chorus where the kick drum pattern changes just a little bit. That takes us into the first chorus and once again the groove hasn't changed very much at all. Keep an eye out for a couple of crash cymbals on beat 4 and just watch those ghost notes a little bit but other than that even the fills are really similar to the opening riff section.
From there, it's into another verse, and that's played exactly the same as the first verse, except for some different fills. So in the fourth bar, here's the first fill. And then in the eighth bar, here's the fill leading us into the pre-chorus. That fill takes us into the second pre-chorus, and at the end of this pre-chorus is one of the best fills in the whole song. There's some triplets in this fill, and I'm going to stick them right, left, left, right, left, left. It just makes it way easier to bring out the accent and kind of keep the flow of the fill going right throughout. Let me play it really slowly so you can start to get your head around it. So like I said, playing those triplets with the right left left pattern is just going to help you keep those left hands really nice and low and that's going to sound way more like the recording. Moving on, we're into another chorus. The first fill in the chorus is exactly the same. The second fill in the chorus is a little bit different and sounds like this. Because that group of six sounds nice and even in the recording, I think just sticking it right left, right left, right left is gonna be the way to go. Moving on, we're still in the chorus and there's a different fill at the end of the next four bars. And then there's one more fill at the end of this lot of choruses. Now we're up to the bridge, and the pattern that we're playing is four on the floor on the kick drums, offbeat hi-hats with a couple of extra ghost notes on the snare drum, but the real standout to me in this section is the bass guitar, which plays some really tasty licks towards the end. Here's the first four bars of the bridge. I'll play the next five bars of the bridge, and that's right, it's a nine bar phrase, so it will feel like it kind of hangs on and holds on a little bit longer than a regular phrase. And once again, we have those quick triplets, which I'm gonna stick right, left, left, right, left, left in the fill at the end. Just that fill one more time. And now I'll put that whole bridge section back together. That brings us to the guitar solo, which keeps pretty much the same beat still, but we're over on the right cymbal. And at the end of the guitar solo, there's a slightly stripped back section, which just means we're not going to play as many kick drums, and this is what that sounds like. So that fill just there is worth taking another look at. Yeah. 
This time, I think the best sticking is just alternating once again, as long as you can hit those accents on the tom, and then try and hit a left, right, going into that last group of six. I'll put that whole stripped down section back together. The next section is similar to the intro in that there's a tom beat going on as well as a regular beat. So if you wanted to, you could grab that tom beat from the start and use that here, or you can just keep playing a regular beat. The main thing I'm going to focus on is just the fills at the end. The first one is pretty cool and it sounds like this. And then at the end of this section, there's another blazing fill with some 16th note triplets. From there, it's back into the chorus and the drum groove stays pretty much the same. I'll play through eight bars, but then I'll go back and look at the last fill because it is a little bit tricky. So the fill at the end there is a six stroke roll once again, but there's a slightly awkward kick that comes in on the right hand doubles. I'll play the whole thing for you, super slow. From there, we move on to the ride cymbal and we're still playing pretty much the same pattern. So I'll just go through eight more bars, but we're really close to the end of the song. The drums just keep going in a similar style until the song fades out. And that brings us to the end of Life is a Highway by Rascal Flatts. Like I said at the beginning, the fills in this song are really great because I think they're useful not just in this song, but in your everyday playing because they kind of keep the groove going and keep things moving along without being too flashy. So get your six stroke rolls up to speed and work on a few of those little runs down the toms and then in no time you'll be playing this song and jamming it out. Have fun practicing and I'll see you at the next lesson.